boys and girls, my name is Miss Jennifer and I am a teaching artist in the PACE program. The PACE program is an arts integration program of the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. And today we'll be learning about rabbits and we will be drawing rabbits. So here I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. We are going to be making rabbits. We will be drawing them. And here is a step by step to show you that we are going to break it up into different parts using the different lines and shapes that you already know. And so let's go ahead and let's start by gathering our supplies. We are going to be needing a white sheet of paper today. This paper is an eight and a half by 11 um, inch sheet of paper. It can be smaller, um, it really doesn't matter. And we're also going to be using newspaper today. We're going to be cutting an 11 inch by eight inch piece of newspaper. Notice that there are no pictures on here. We're mainly wanting the words on the paper for this lesson. We will also be using watercolor paint, like this. If you have any other kind of paint, that would be fine. Just know that it's going to take a little bit longer to dry, so you may have to stop and wait for your paper to dry before you can add your pieces onto your paper. If you do not have paint, then that is okay. You can simply use markers or you could even use crayons and that would be totally fine. If you are painting with me today, you are going to need a paintbrush and a cup of water. We will also need a ruler. Now you might ask, what are we going to do with that ruler? Well, we're going to take that ruler and we're going to sort of divide up the space. As you see here, we're going to make some straight lines on our paper and the ruler will just help us to make sure that our lines are pretty straight. You're also going to be using a pair of scissors and some pieces of construction paper. Now don't worry, if you do not have construction paper, that is okay. You can simply just take white paper, use your crayons or markers, color the paper, and that will work the same way. You will also be needing a bottle of glue. If you have a glue stick, you may also use that today. Now there's one more thing that I used on my picture, but you don't necessarily have to do this. This just makes it a little bit easier. If for some reason you have a hole punch laying around the house, you may use this. If not, then all you have to do, draw a small circle on your paper, cut it out with your scissors, and there you will have small circles. And so, now I'm going to give you some time to stop the video. Gather your supplies, make your little area nice and comfortable, and ready to start our drawing. You can go ahead and you can stop the video now. When you are ready to continue, press play. Okay, boys and girls, as you can see, I have moved to my table where I'm going to be doing this lesson with you. Here, you can see the finished picture that I made. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a rabbit. We are going to be drawing on newspaper and then we're going to be coloring our rabbit. If you notice on this picture, there are a couple of brown lines that's going to help us know exactly where to start and end when we are drawing our rabbit today. I want you to look carefully at this picture. I have a line that's going from top to bottom. Would that be a horizontal line or a vertical line? If you said a vertical line, you are correct. Now I have two lines that are going across from side to side. Would you say that those are vertical or horizontal? If you said horizontal, you got it right. Good job. And so let's go back to this picture. 
So we're going to make our rabbit. Our rabbit is going to be glued onto the foreground of our picture. Now you may ask, what is the foreground? Well, the foreground is sort of the front part of the picture. This part here is the background. So our rabbit's in the front and the background is in the back. And so we are going to be doing that today along with making some grass and some beautiful flowers out of construction paper. We will be coloring our rabbit with crayons and using a marker to draw. And we're going to be painting using watercolor paint to make our background today. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna put those off to the side and I'm going to show you a couple of pictures and give you some little fun facts about rabbits. Boys and girls, so rabbits are found all over the world. Their little hind legs, which are right here, are much longer than their front legs. And instead of walking like we do, they hop around. Could you practice hopping? Let's hop, 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 hop. Oh, good job. Let's try it one more time. Hop, 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 hop. Awesome. And now you're hopping like a rabbit. And so their ears are super, super large and long. If you look here, I made some really long ears. And that's what we're going to do today. Now rabbits usually have white, black, brown, or gray fur. Wild rabbit, which this one is a wild rabbit, is usually a lot smaller than rabbits that you see in a cage. Wild rabbits do not do very well if you try to put them in a cage. They just won't make it because they don't have what they need uh, in nature to survive. But sometimes you can get a rabbit that is um, for a cage and those rabbits make great pets. Rabbits like to socialize. That means that they like to come together in groups and spend time with each other. Sort of like when you get together with your friends, you are in a group and you are socializing. Rabbits like to do the same thing. Now, baby rabbits have a name called a kitten. Hmm, they're not a cat, but they're still called kittens. They also are called kit, or as we probably call them, baby bunnies. A mom rabbit can have up to eight or nine babies at one time. Baby rabbits, as you can see here, have their eyes closed. It takes about 10 days before they can see anything. All right, so here I have another wild rabbit that is sort of standing up. And that's kind of how we're going to be making our rabbit today. If you look here, here's another picture of the rabbit. And this one looks a lot more like the one we're going to be making today. Do you see that? We're going to be making his head and part of his body, just like here in his super long ears. And so let's go ahead and let's get some fun facts in before we actually start drawing today. Did you know that rabbits have their babies in tunnels? They dig tunnels underneath the ground to put their babies so that their babies are safe. Again, this is what their babies look like. And a mom rabbit is called a doe. Can we say that together? A doe. A boy rabbit is called a buck. Let's say that, buck. And again, we know that the baby rabbits are called a kit, kitten, or baby bunny. Rabbits like to eat plants, berries, seeds, and sometimes even bark from trees. Rabbits are also known for eating in people's gardens, and that is where they're going to eat broccoli, cabbage, carrots, which we know that they love, and even Brussels sprouts, and sometimes they'll even nibble on other 
plants in my garden. Um, and so we know that rabbits love to eat things that they find outside. Now, if you take a wild rabbit and you put it in a cage, it will not do very well. Let's make sure that we leave those out in nature and try not to catch them. But you can get a rabbit that um, is a rabbit in a cage and you can make a pet out of that rabbit. All right, and so I am ready to begin. The very first thing that we're going to need today is our newspaper. I'm going to pour my crayons out on the side and I'm looking for a brown crayon. It doesn't really matter if it's a dark, light, or medium brown. That will all work just the same. And I will also need that ruler that I told you about. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper and we're gonna take the top and we're going to fold it down to the bottom, just like this. Rubbing it with our hands so that it is nice and folded and all of the edges are touching each other. Then you're going to open up your paper. And here is my line. So I'm gonna lay my roller right next to that line. I'm going to take my brown crayon and I'm going to make two brown lines, one on top of the other. And there I go. There is my line going across. Now watch this. I'm gonna take the bottom of my paper and I'm going to fold it to this brown line. Make sure the bottom is touching the brown line and fold your paper again. See, here's the bottom of the paper touching the brown line. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to do the same thing. I will lay my ruler on to my line and hold the ruler tight and make two lines with my crayon. And so now I have my two horizontal lines. Now I wanna take my paper and I wanna fold it this way, making sure the edges touch and I'm gonna fold it. Now, when I fold my paper going this way, I wanna make sure that my paper is standing nice and tall so that I can fold it vertically. All right, I'm going to take my ruler again, I'm going to lay it across that folded line, holding my ruler really tight. I'm going to draw that line two times. And now it sort of looks like we have a little grid going on here. We have a vertical line and two horizontal lines. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking a marker to draw my rabbit. If you do not have a black marker, grab your black crayon and that will work just fine. And I'm going to also pull out my drawing that I started earlier. I'm going to put it on the side just so that you can kind of see what I'm doing as I go along on my picture. All right, so here we go. If you notice right here, this line crosses your top line right here. What you're going to do is about right here, you're going to put a black dot on each side. Noticing that this brown line is in the middle, right? So let's make our dots now. Then we're going to take those dots and we're going to trace around them, making a, you got it, an oval and color it in. There's one eye and there's two eyes. Don't worry about the brown crayons, boys and girls, because guess what? They will disappear when we color our rabbit brown. So there are his eyes. And I would say, you know what? This might be a perfect time to make his eyelashes. And those simply are little dashed lines. Just like that. And we're making sure that these lines stay on top of the brown line. We don't wanna put the eyelashes under the eyes. All right, and now this is what we're going to do next. We're going to go down to this part right here and we're going to, right where these two lines meet, 
we're going to put a curve line just like this then close it off with a line and color it in what do you think that's going to be boys and girls you were right his nose awesome then underneath the brown line we're going to draw a straight line that's part of his mouth and here we're going to make a curved line now at any point that you feel like you need to slow this down a little bit just turn off the video catch up and then just return press play and I will be here for you all right so there you go how's it going boys and girls do you have his eyes his nose and his mouth I hope so all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a, top, a dot on top of his nose and under his mouth, just like this. And we're going to connect this together with one curved line. And then again, we're going to go to the other side and make a curved line. Do you see that we are now making the part of his face where his mouth is at? Good job. All right, up on the top here, let's make a dot about this far from the top. And now for this part, we're going to go to the brown line about right here and here. And we're gonna put two more dots. I'll make those dots a little bit bigger so that you can see them. All right, now I'm gonna take this dot and this dot and I want to connect it together with a curved line just like this I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side I'm going to make a curved line just like that all right now we need to pay attention for the next part we need to look right here we are about to draw the part from this brown line to his circle on his face. Remember now that this does not go around the bottom. It stops right at the circle, okay? So here I'm going to start about right here and I'm going to, and you can make it a little wavy if you want, go here and I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. I'm gonna start near the bottom and I'm going to make it here. It's okay if you mess up a little bit, like Miss Jennifer sort of messed up right here. It's okay. We can always just color over that and it will be just fine. Also, when we cut it out, it won't even show. So now we have his head. We're going to start here. We're going to draw a curved line going this way around his eye. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to make a curved line making sure that you have them not so close together. We want to leave a space right here. All right, down at the bottom by the brown line, we're gonna draw the curve for the side of his body. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And guess what? Now it's time to make his ears. Remember again, if you need to stop to catch up, just stop and press play when you're ready to do this again. Now I'm going to start at the top of his head. I'm going to go to the top of the paper with a curved line. And here is another curved line. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this side. A curved line and a curved line. And there you go. Now, I think right here I went a little too far. So I'm actually going to shorten this part and I'm going to just simply cut this part off. So if you make a mistake, look how easy it is. Just draw your line, put little lines through it so that you know that's the part that you're going to cut off. And now I have my rabbit. One more thing that I am missing. And those are his, you guessed it, his little whiskers. And now we are ready 
to start coloring. All right, now my rabbit is drawn. You're going to take your brown crayon and now you're going to color your rabbit. Let's not color around his nose part right here because we're going to do something else right there. We're going to color all the way across his body. Remember, staying away from this part of his body. And you can turn your paper if you need to color. You can go back and you can color over any parts that you want darker. Again, don't worry about this line. We can leave it and it's not even going to show. And there I go. I'm going to color a little bit darker. Just like this. All right, so now I'm going to color his face. And again, I'm going to leave that circle not colored. And I'm going to color over his face. I can color over the lines because you know what? It's not going to show. And here I go. I am going to color the rest of his face. Now, boys and girls, if you go outside the line when you're coloring today, it doesn't matter because, of course, we are going to be cutting our bunny out today. And so there we go. All right. Now, I want to do one more thing. And you can do this if you want, but you don't have to. If you want to put curves on the inside of his ears, just like this, you can also do that. There you go. And I'm looking at my bunny, and of course I drew it from this direction, and I kind of think that I want to make his face a little smaller right here. So again, I'm just going to put those little lines to let me know that I want to cut that part off. All right. And so now I'm going to continue coloring his ears. Again, I wanted to show you that if you mess up, it doesn't mean that you have to start all over because you can simply fix it because we're going to be cutting off all the extra pieces and it's not even going to show. So it is okay. You don't have to start over. And now I'm coloring his other ear. And I think now I have my bunny colored. And okay, the brown is done. And now I think I want to use peach because on the inside of their ears, sometimes it is a lighter color sort of like a pinkish color. And so there's one, and here is the other. All right, I'm also going to be coloring around the circle, inside of the circle with the peach. How's it going, boys and girls? Did you happen to make mistakes like Miss Jennifer and you fixed it? I hope that you did fix it because this is a perfect way to learn to draw without having to start and start and start again. All right, now I'm going to color the circle where his mouth and his nose are at, and I'm coloring those pink. You can color it as dark or as light as you would like. And I'm going to use some brown, and I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that pink and sort of make it like a pinkish brown going to go back and color any little spots that I didn't color in. All right, and this might also be another good time for you to pause this video, catch up, and come back. Just stop. When you come back, press play. Okay, I have finished coloring my, my rabbit. I'm going to use my scissors next. And I'm going to take my time and I'm going to, now remember, the newspaper is very thin, so you're going to have to take your time. Again, remember where I messed up. If you have any mess ups, you want to make sure that you fix it now. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to cut that part off that I messed up on. And I'm going to go all the way to the end of his ear. These pieces, just put them off to the side. You can throw them away later. And you might have to turn your rabbit around as you're cutting, just like Miss Jennifer is doing. Be careful not to cut off his ears. Let's keep his ears connected to his body, please. There we go. I'm going to turn it again. And now, remember, 
this is where I messed up. And I can simply fix it by just cutting on my other line. Just like this. And I'm almost at the end. So look here. Here's the part that is now taken off. And here's my rabbit. Alright. So I'm going to take my rabbit now. And I'm just going to put my rabbit off to the side. Because now I want to get my paper, which is my background. Because remember, my rabbit is my foreground. I want to get my background ready. For the background, we're going to be painting. If you do not have paint, remember it's okay. You may color this part with your crayons. Here's my cup of water. Here's my paint set. And I'll turn it this way so you can see it. And here I go. I'm ready to get started. And so for watercolor paint, you must wet your paintbrush first. If not, your paint will not work. And also, you don't want to press really hard inside of the paint because that's going to also leave some thick, clumpy paint. All right, so now I'm set up for painting. I'm gonna do one thing that is super fun before I start painting. I'm gonna get my white crayon and I am going to simply just scribble circles all over my paint. And you can even make some that are kind of cut off on these sides, and that is perfectly fine. And I might want to do one more here and here. Making sure to press hard. If you feel like you didn't press hard enough, you can go back. Now guess what? You're gonna have to look really close at your paper because this magic white crayon will not show very good on this white paper. But making sure that you do it dark because that is going to be a surprise when we paint. And so, let's go ahead and why don't you do that now. I'm gonna take a scrap piece of paper and I'm gonna put it underneath my painting paper just so that I don't paint onto my tablecloth. And here I will begin. I will be painting a sky today and I'm going to be using yellow and orange. I'm not going to be using blue today because I want it to look like the sun is nice and bright in the sky. And here I go. I'm going to pick. Oh, what's happening here? Look at this. Where you colored with your crayon, the paint will not stick. That's called a watercolor resist technique, boys and girls. Anytime you have that oil from your crayons, you will not have paint sticking to the crayon. And so there you go. And you're going to paint all the way around. Now, if you decide that you want another color for your sky, I say do it. Any color that you want. Just have fun with it. Remember to uh, wet your paintbrush before you pick up the paint. And there you go. Now some of these petal parts where the paint is not sticking to the crayon, you could actually go back and pick up some of that paint on your paintbrush so that we don't have a lot of wet paint on our paper. And here I go. I don't want to paint all the way to the bottom because I do want to paint some green um, so that I can have grass on the ground. And here we go. So here's my yellow. Now I'm going to wash my paintbrush before using another color and I'm going to use some orange. And for this orange, I'm sort of just going to kind of draw on my paper these little like circle spiral kind of things here. And there you go. Now, this one's a little dark, so I'm going to try to spread some of that color around my paper, just like this, so that I kind of have that orange all over and again you can see everywhere there's crayon we do not have paint and I am finished painting the sky washing my paintbrush to paint the ground next and I'm going to paint from one side to the other and here I go 
I'm gonna take some of that extra wet paint and I'm just gonna kind of spread it around. It doesn't have to be perfect, boys and girls. It is simply the ground. All right, so I'm going to pause now and wait for you to return. So let's pause together. And when you're ready, press play and I will be here. All right, boys and girls, are you back? Good job. How did your background turn out? Did you like it? Did you add different colors? I bet they are all amazing. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to get a paper towel. So if you need to grab a paper towel, go ahead and do so now. I will wait for you. And you're going to take your paper towel and you're just going to lay it on top of your picture. All we kind of wanna do is take that extra water off of our picture. And so, there we go. So if you are just returning, then you just want to simply just kind of take the extra paint off of your paper just like this and now i ready i'm ready to move on to the next part and so i'm going to move that scrap paper and the next thing i need to do is add my bunny to my picture so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some glue now let's make sure let's not put too much glue because then it's going to take a long time to dry here is my glue on my rabbit. Noticing that I'm putting my glue on the back, not on the side with the crayon. And now I want to glue my rabbit on. Make sure that your rabbit is touching the bottom of your paper. And there we go. There is my rabbit. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scrap pieces of construction paper. Now, if you have some green for your grass, that will work. If you want to be creative, you can use any color that you want. So now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to start cutting pieces that are sort of shaped like a what, boys and girls? You're right, a triangle. And I can kind of use that corners for that. And here I can make an even longer one. And you're basically just making triangles, just like this. They do not have to be perfect, just as long as you are making them into what sort of looks like a triangle. Because this is what you're going to be using for the grass on your picture. I'll make a few more while waiting for you to finish up. Just putting the scraps off to the side. Now I'm going to start putting glue on the backs of my triangles. And I'm just going to simply start gluing them on all along the bottom of my paper, just like this. You can put it on each side if you want. There you go. Oops, I dropped mine, I need to pick it up and glue it on. Don't worry if your bottom is not even, that is okay. Thank you, moving boys and girls. I'm going to do the same. And I think I'm gonna put this one on this side. I don't wanna put them too tall over my rabbit's face. And there you go. Maybe some short ones across the front. Just like this. And I think I'm going to just put a few more. If some of them are too big, 
Just cut the bottoms off and make your triangle smaller. And there's one, and I'm going to put another one that I need to cut smaller. And maybe one more. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut it shorter. There you go. And now I have my grass. You can press it down. If you want to take your picture, you want to take your scissors and you want to trim off any of the green that's sticking off the bottom, you can definitely do that, but you don't have to. How's it going? I bet your picture's looking really good. Let's go ahead and continue our grass. You may pause if you need to. If not, let's keep on working. The next thing that I'm going to be doing, boys and girls, is I'm going to be working on my flowers. It doesn't matter what kind of flowers you make, just have fun with it. So here, I think that I'm going to take my red piece of construction paper and I'm just gonna wiggle it around and make sort of a wiggly, wavy little line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And guess what? There is a flower. You can glue it on. That's one way that you can make a flower. And if you want, you can make even bigger waves. Like this. Make it a little bit bigger. And here's another flowers on my paper. Pretty simple, isn't it? Alright, now I'm going to show you something really fun. I'm going to get my, I'll use a pen, and for the next one, I'm going to do a curved line and another curved line. Do you see this? There you go. And I'm just going to make a couple of these. Um, I would say I'm going to make six. Curve line, curve line, and now I'm going to cut them out. This is going to be a much larger flower. And so there's one petal. Here is two petals. I'm gonna keep cutting my petals. While I'm doing this, go ahead and work on your flowers. Anytime you need to stop, stop, and then press play to join us again. one more. Putting my scraps off to the side. So now here are all my petals that I drew and I cut out. Well guess what? I'm going to do something. Oh, one second my finger. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I just want to make my bunny look so happy and what I could do is right here, I could put a dot of glue and I could glue these flower petals onto the part next to his ear, just like he picked a flower and put it next to his ear, just like this. And so now my bunny has a pretty flower and you could do that too. Now again, if you remember, Miss Jennifer talked about a hole punch. If you don't have a hole punch, just simply draw little circles, cut them out, and you can use those for the middle of your flowers. And here I'm going to punch one, two, and three. I'm going to open up the little part that holds them in, and there I go. I'm going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. Of course, you can make your dots or your circles that you cut out different colors. I think for this one, I want them to all be pink. And there we go. Here are my two rabbits that I made today. Notice they're different and that's okay. 
the more you practice, the better they'll be. And you know what? Sometimes we want them to look different because not every rabbit will look the same. So there you go. You can go ahead and you can finish putting your grass and your flowers. We are finished with this lesson for today. So boys and girls, now that we have finished our little rabbit drawings, I would actually like to see your pictures. Could you please ask an adult to take a picture of you along with your rabbit picture and put it on Facebook, making sure to tag the Acadian Center for the Arts when you do this. I am pretty sure that other students and children in the community would love to also share theirs so that you can see the different ways that the kids made their rabbits and added the different parts to their picture. So again, make sure that you send these to Facebook, tag the Acadia Center for the Arts, and I will be watching for your pictures. We will be posting new lessons at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Some lessons will be in visual arts and others will be in creative movement. So be sure to come back and visit us tomorrow. If you are interested in donating to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization that manages the PACE program, you may do so by using the link in the description. Help keep our teaching artists working and share your video videos and come back and make more art with us. You want more? I teach private art lessons online. If you would like to take more lessons with me, then just simply have your parent email me at j-e-n-j-a-z at yahoo.com. I can lead one-on-one -on -one lessons or even group lessons. So if you want more art with me, make sure that you have your parent email me. I will get back to you and guess what? We can start making more of this fun art. So again, until next time, keep on making your drawings of your rabbits. Practice doing it different kinds of ways. Practice adding different things to the background. So goodbye for now and I will see you again later.